But if you turn to page 44, we'll look at the building and roofing components and tile installation terms. If you look at that drawing, you'll see that, you know, there's the very common details that we know from any part of the country, a valley, a head wall, a side wall, the eave, the rake, both left and right. And then there's other terms more specific to tile, for example, uh, headlap and exposure. Uh, headlap and exposure is what we refer to the two components of the tile installation layout. The headlap is the part that is overlapping the preceding course and the exposure is what's exposed, what you can see when the tile is properly installed. Uh, there is the anchor and the base sheet, you know, sometimes can be confusing. Essentially the same thing, but the term anchor refers to the fact we're going to be anchoring that sheet in a way that it's part of that load path of resisting that uplift force. You can see that the fastening for the anchor sheet can be pretty significant compared to other types of roof installations. And we've got the, uh, the table for that on page 22, that's table one. We'll look at battens. Battens can be named a variety of things across the country. Uh, you know, a one by two nominal uh, batten, uh, also re referred to as a one by two. Some will call them sticks. Uh, we do have different types of battens. We have counter battens. Borel has a proprietary product called an elevated batten. Eagle has a, a product called an arched batten. Uh, they, they provide uh, air movement and moisture movement underneath the tile. And there's a variety of different products that you'll see, but they're all referring to a product that will have specifications to deal with the issues they cause and the benefits they create when you're using battens. Uh, we've also got uh, tar, uh, roof tar that we use in different situations. And, you know, people re refer to it as bowl, mastic, tar, pookie, bear, dollar sign, hashtag it. Uh, but, you know, a variety of things, but it all boils down to being that black goopy stuff that we use when we need to integrate a pipe flashing or a flashing into our underlayment or sealing certain parts of the roof. And usually when we refer to bull or mastic, we'll also uh, refer to the idea of three coursing. And three coursing relates to you started out with this underlayment and cut a hole in it. And to integrate that flashing properly, we're going to put down tar or bull, and then we're going to embed a fiberglass webbing or mat in that and then smooth over the top with mastic. So that mastic, webbing mastic, is what we refer to as three coursing. And then slope and pitch. Sometimes I, I ignore this uh, because it's so common for, for us in the roofing industry, but also when we have people that come from outside the roofing industry, they're not always as familiar. And we'll go through an entire class and talk about a four and a five and a seven, referring to seven, twelve, four, twelve pitches, and we don't actually cover what that means. So let's do that real quick. A 412 is that real easy slope on the upper left there, and a 1212 is the more severe slope that you see. So how do we get that? Um, all of you engineers have two wooden rulers in your toolbox, and you put them together like this, and a 412 is coming in 12 inches on the horizontal, uh, so on the, the, say, the top of the joist, and then going up four inches for every foot, so that's four inches of rise, for every foot gives us a 412 pitch. So a relatively modest uh, walkable pitch. The minimum slope for standard installations for most steep slope products for, for asphalt shingles for a lot of products 412 is the minimum pitch for standard installations. If we go below 412 we might have some additional requirements. A 1212 is coming in that same 12 inches. We're always using the 12 as the the bottom run and then going up 12 inches that gives you a 45 degree angle and obviously that's a much more severe pitch the water's going to run off more there might be more uh, fastening or batten requirements another easy way to measure the roof is we'll all have something on our phone a pitch gauge app on the phone and uh, one other thing I want to point out as long as we're talking about pitch is you can see here that this mock-up that we've got in the classroom when I put my phone on there it registers a 412 so I I built that mock-up to a 412 slope. And something we refer to often in the class is the cant angle. And the cant angle is important. Uh, we'll talk about um, some details where the cant angle is something we want to consider using transition flashings. But as you can see, the roof slope, the slope of the deck is a 412. 
but if we put the pitch gauge on the tile surface itself, the, the slope is a 3.3. That's not going to be consistent. It'll be close, but it's not going to be consistent. It will vary based on the type of tile, the type of installation, direct to the deck or batten, the, the amount of headlap. We can adjust our headlap and that will change that. But the important part of that is to recognize that the surface of the tile will have a less steep slope than the surface of the roof deck. But all of our specifications relate to the slope of the deck, not the cant angle.